food, food intake. Uh, let's talk calories. Let's talk um, importance of getting the nutrients in. Uh, let's talk about food as probably the, one of the biggest drivers to losing body fat, keeping your lean muscle mass. What do we need to do with regards to all of those? Where do you want to start with it? Um, I mean, we can just start with calories. Now, back in the day of, of competing, you know, this is this is what we did. We tracked all of our calories. We tracked all of our macros, you know, and there is a certain degree of importance to that. I think over time, I have, I have shifted a little bit away from that and have started focusing a little bit more on the hormonal component to that all is. of this. Um, and I feel my personal belief is, is if you can get a good hold on the hormonal piece, get into proper balance, then the calories, as important as they could be, sort of work them, themselves out. You know, that you is. don't have to be hyper vigilant about tracking all of your all of your calories and all of your food so you know the way that this came about what i would do with clients today um and it's the same thing i do for myself it's the same thing uh my wife corey beth does for herself you know the way we stumbled upon what we do is after those years of competing and for me knowing that i'm done you know after doing it for 13 15 years that's it i don't want to do this anymore the one thing that and I know you're going to relate to this, right? Because post-competition, there's always, there's always that certain um, feeling of, I hate to use the term, but I can't think of a better one, of depression, if you will, mm -hmm. that you can't maintain that condition year round. No. That, you know, you, you had it for a couple of days, maybe you dialed it in perfectly for, for a show. Um, maybe it came two days after the show and you're like, damn it, why, why couldn't this happen earlier? Um, <laughs> But, but there's always that, that, you know, feeling of, man, like I gotta, I gotta do another competition. I have to go through this process of, of tracking everything and being super meticulous to get back to that. And that was really disheartening to me because I knew that like, this was it for me. I'm, I'm moving on to the next stage of my life. Like, I don't think I'm going to step on a stage again. Mm -hmm. And, and yet I didn't want to let go of, of, being in that type of condition. So that really forced me to reevaluate the way I was approaching my nutrition. And whereas I have always been, and still to some degree are a, you know, if it fits your macros type of guy, um, you know, I'm not one to alienate things or, or again, demonize any particular macronutrient, you know, if it fits great, but sometimes even with that approach, you can eat just enough of the wrong thing and throw your hormones out of whack. Right. So, so to me, once I, I got a good handle on getting into that hormonal balance, you know, using things like we were talking earlier about time restricted eating. Um, I feel that some of those things in terms of caloric intake, you know, being driven to eat the proper nutrients and, and foods that, make you feel good, give you energy, right? Help you to maintain your musculature. Like some of that just sort of falls into place. And that's where I'm at today. I mean, I do not count anything, um, maybe except my protein. That is the one macronutrient yeah, interesting. that I am hyper vigilant about making sure that I am at least close to what I would consider my ideal range. Um, and I make sure I get that each day. What's the range? Uh, Mike, what's the range? What do for you have me, gram -wise? Yeah. Yeah. For me, it falls somewhere between about 125 and maybe 150 grams of protein per day. Okay. Um, and that's that's based on my size, right? I'm not exactly. a huge guy by any stretch. So so I don't need a ton. Um, and then I'm filling in the rest with you know high quality fats. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I sort of leave carbohydrates last. But um, you know, even when it comes to those, I, I, I'll be I'll be conscientious of, hey, how might this affect my blood glucose and my insulin? Uh, because I know how I feel if I have those things or when I have them. So, you know, I'm still a carb eater, right? I'm not one of these guys who said, oh, I'm, I'm getting rid of carbs, but, but I also tend to backload those on my day because early in the day, like I feel good not operating out of carbohydrates and such, which give me the little bump, but then too much of a drop. So I've learned over time to just manage it. All right. Um, you are, I mean, you're very good with your numbers. You're very good with your, uh, your knowledge of 
uh, intermittent fasting. There's a lot of people who hop on the intermittent fasting bandwagon. And the reason why they're successful for the most part is there's now a structure to their diet. They're not eating all the time. They've got a window that they eat and they're starting to see progress, but you've taken it to a completely different level. What's your, what's your window and what does it look like meal wise? So I typically have about a seven to eight hour eating window. And then that leaves me with, you know, maybe a 16 to 17 hour uh, fasting window. You know, I, when it comes to the structure and this is, again, it, I preach the same thing, you know, to a client that I, that I do myself, I don't get um, too caught up in the, the details of having these perfectly spaced out meals. Once I start eating, right. you know, I, I am more of that firm believer in first, if I'm going to, if I'm going to calculate anything, it's just going to be make sure that I'm starting each meal with protein. Like yes. that is the basis, right? The Greek translations for protein is protease, which means like of primary importance. Nice. Um, so, so protein needs to be your first point yeah. of focus. Um, and then from there, I eat to where I'm satisfied. Uh, a good example is normally I will start my day eating around 1 p.m. That's pretty typical for me is, is somewhere between 12 and 1 p.m. Uh, depending upon the day. I'm not going to be super tight about it, you know, mm. and if there's a day I feel like I need to start eating a little bit earlier, that's fine too. Uh, just like the sleep, I believe in this sliding scale when it comes to intermittent fasting and time restricted eating, you know, you, you got to give yourself that flexibility. You, what's great about it is I find that it provides you with a structure, but even within that structure, and especially the longer you do it, the more you'll find like, hey, there's, there's actually a lot more variability here than, yes, than I so thought. Mm -hmm. And there's, there could be days where I don't eat for 20 hours, 22 hours, right? Now that's not frequently, but I'm not freaking out on those days that I haven't eaten yet, you know, and I'm not feeling hungry or anything like that. So, so I think that, you know, just having saying, I'm going to keep things within this window. I think that that just makes it simple for a lot of people and especially Let's just be honest, in the day and age that we live, you know, having to stop every few hours or thinking about food every hour and a half, two hours, like it's exhausting. Yes. Um, and I found that once I moved to, you know, doing time restricted eating, uh, it created more freedom for me. And I just had, I just knew that, hey, within this time frame, I'm just going to try to pack in all my macros, right? I'm going to get them all in within this time frame. And there's days where I'll eat lunch. And literally, you know, not even 10, 20 minutes afterwards, I'm like, yeah, I'm still not satisfied. And that's where I'll, I'll go and I'll grab a protein bar. I'll grab a protein drink. You know, I'll have some more nuts. And I'm not worried about the caloric intake because what inevitably winds up happening is in, instead of that maybe snack or meal I would have in between lunch and dinner, um, I just keep moving, right? I just keep going throughout my day. And then I go with a massive dinner. And I do that so that I don't feel like I have to snack afterwards, right? right? So I think that that it just, you're right. If For people who do it for the first time, like I think they see success because they finally have structure. But I think the hidden benefit of all this, and I could go into, you know, reduced insulin levels and, and all of that, and that's true. But I think the bigger thing is that it's the, sh the decrease in stress around food. Yes. I mean, you know how much, especially coming from that bodybuilding background, we stressed about food, having to eat every two to three hours. And if you didn't, you were freaking out. Think about what our cortisol levels were doing. It's like, we're battling our body. We, we, we're, our stress levels are the highest. And then we're going to eat at that time when our stress levels are the most yep, very elevated, very yep. making it easy to store fat. Mm -hmm. So I found like this just brought those stress levels down. It gave me a new and different perspective. And it just, it works personally with my lifestyle. I'm not going to say that it, it's necessarily for everybody, but, you know, I think that a lot of people who, who enjoy the structure, you know, you can make it work. I mean, we have, I have clients who are like, but you know what? I, I love breakfast. Like I, I just enjoy getting up eating. I'm like, so then do it, you know, exactly. do it, but try to keep your window to this. And they're like, Oh, I could do that. Yeah. Cause I don't care about dinner anyway. Like I don't usually eat after four or five o'clock as it is perfect. So do that. You know, you can make it work for you.
What does dinner look like? Dinner is usually pretty basic. I mean, where where you know a large amount of protein of some sort. So whether that's coming from chicken. I mean, last night we did eggs. We'll do chicken. We'll do eggs. We'll do beef. We'll do turkeys. Um, you know, uh, typically it's it's some animal based protein and then normally with that comes some cooked veg- vegetables and normally some type of starch along with it you know we're we're big in with uh, rice in our household uh since our kids love rice it makes it easy for us yep. and so so we'll make a bunch of rice and that's where i'll get my day's portion of carbohydrates is typically when i sit down for dinner 